In this video, I want to go over electric potential versus electric potential energy. They're not the same. I know they look very similar. They sound very similar, but they're not the same. So what's the difference between electric potential and electric potential energy? Well, first, let's focus on electric potential energy. So let's say we had this system. Let's say we had this system with these two positive charges. Then whenever we have charges in close proximity, we have a system with energy in the form of electrical potential energy. So for example, maybe we have this system with these two positive charges with this distance. If we have this system with charges, we know we have a system with energy in the form of electrical potential energy. And let's say this system happens to have 10 joules of energy in the form of electrical potential energy. But now let's compare it to another system. So now let's say we have an, another system with those same two charges, but now they're really close by. Now they're, they're right next to each other. So again, now we have another system with energy in the form of electrical potential energy. Because something you just need to be f aware of and familiar of is whenever you have charges in close proximity, we have a system with energy in the form of electrical potential energy. So let's say this system happens to have 30 joules of energy in the form of electrical potential energy. So what's going on? Why did this system have this much energy in the form of electrical potential energy and this system had this much energy in the form of electrical potential energy? Well, we can always use this formula to determine how much energy is in the form of electrical potential energy in a system. For example, we had this system and we wanted to ask ourselves how much energy in the form of electrical potential energy is in the system. We just use this formula. We use Coulomb's constant, which is just a constant. It's 9 times 10 to the 9 using SI units. So that's just Coulomb's constant. This represents the magnitude of charge 1, the number, the magnitude of the Coulombs of charge 1. This represents the magnitude of the Coulombs of charge 2. And this represents the distance between the center of the two charges. So if you know all those values, you can just plug it in this formula and you would get, it would tell you how much energy is in the form of electrical potential energy in the system. And you could do the same thing for this system. Just plug in our values, plug in the distance between them, and now you know how much energy you have. And again, I talked about this in the last video. I have a link of it below. I highly recommend you watch it. It'll, it'll make more sense. So now let's talk about electric potential. And again, it's not the same. I know it's confusing. These two words look nearly identical, but they're not the same. This is energy. Electrical potential energy is a characteristic of a system. It tells us how much energy in the form of electrical potential energy is in a system. However, electric potential is different. It's very different. Essentially, what electric potential is, is let's say we have this, this region in space that's high in positiveness. Maybe we have a positive charge, or it doesn't really matter. Let's just say we have a region that's high in positiveness. Then we have a region in space that's high in electric potential. However, maybe we have another region in space, and this region in space is low in positiveness. It's more on the negative side. Then this region in space is low in electric potential. And that's just something you just need to memorize. It's just the convention that humankind ha has used. We decided that high electric potential means high in positiveness. And I like to think uh, this, this region is high in electric potential. It's high in electrical positiveness. That's how I like to think of EP electric potential. But technically, the point is we, we've, des uh, we've designated positive, a region that's positive as being high in electric potential, and a region that's negative then it's low in positiveness, so therefore it's low in electric potential. And again, just I know it's abstract, but with time it should make more sense. But something important to realize is this electric potential is always relative. This region is relatively positive. This region is less positive. So we have a relative difference in positive. And a, re a difference in electric potential is referred to as a voltage. So we have a voltage. We have a reason that region that's high in electric potential and a region that's low in electric potential. So we have a difference in electric potential. We have a certain voltage. So now let's plug in some numbers. So again, maybe this region is high in electric potential, high in positiveness with maybe positive tendrils per coulomb, and this region's low in electric potential. Remember, low in electric positiveness, so, so more on the negative side. So maybe this is negative 10 joules per coulomb. So we clearly have a difference in electric potential. We have, we have, this would represent 20 volts, a difference of 20 joules per coulomb. And realize, this doesn't mean this is positive 10 coulombs. That's not the units. This isn't charge. Electrical potential isn't charge. And I know this is where it gets really complex, but just bear with me. Just realize, a re electric potential is a characteristic of a region in space. And if that region is spa in space is high in electric potential, it's high in positiveness, and the units are joules per coulomb. Then again, we would have a gradient. 
Here would be maybe a little less positive. Here would be neutral. Here would be negative. And then here would be relatively more negative. But again, it's all relative. There's not an absolute amount of electric potential in a region. It's always relative. Relatively, this is relatively more positive than this region, and etc. This region is relatively more positive than this region, and etc. It's just a relative difference in electric potential. And so what's going to happen if we throw in a positive charge right here in this region that's high in electric potential? Well, it's going to go to regions of lower electric potential because if it's a positive charge particle, it wants to go to regions that are more negative. That, that, that's, that's intuitive. That makes sense. So the way I like to think about this is let's say, again, we, we had this region with this electric potential, this region with this electric potential, and et cetera, this gradient. What would happen if we threw a positive 2 Coulomb particle right at this region of this particular electric potential? Well, the a neat thing you can do is whenever you know the electric potential of a region in space and you know the magnitude of the charge that enters that region in space, you can just multiply those two values. So again, this region in space has an electric potential of positive 5 joules per coulomb, and we have a positive 2 coulomb charge. Let's say we, we put it right in this region. So we have a positive 2 coulomb charge. You can simply just multiply them. Just multiply them, the coulombs cancel, and you're left with energy. You're left with how much energy in the form of electrical potential energy you'd have. So again, remember the difference. Electric potential is a characteristic of a region in space. This region in space has this particular electric potential. However, if we threw in positive 2 coulomb charge here, now we would have a system with energy in the form of electrical potential energy. Exactly how much energy? Again, you just multiply those two values, and we would get, we would, if we threw this positive 2 coulomb charge, if we threw any positive 2 coulomb charge to any region that has this particular electric potential, we would have a system with 10 joules of energy in the form of electric potential energy. And again, you can, these are just different ways of looking at the units, but really they're telling us the same thing. So we know if we have this positive 2 Coulomb charge here, we have a system with this much energy. However, what would happen if we threw that positive 2 Coulomb charge here in this region of space that's at negative 5 joules per Coulomb of electric potential energy? Well, again, we know how to do that. If we know the electric potential of a region in space, and we know the magnitude of the charge on that region in space, we can just multiply them, and now we get, we, it tells us how much energy is in the form of electrical potential energy. So again, this region had a certain electric potential, but if we throw this positive 2 Coulomb charge in this particular region, we would have a system with energy. How much energy? Negative 10 joules of energy in the form of electric potential energy. So now we know. So now we know if we have a positive 2 Coulomb charge here, we have a system with positive 10 joules of energy in the form of electrical potential energy. However, we have a positive 2 Coulomb charge here of this region of electric potential, we have a system with negative 10 joules of energy in the form of electrical potential energy. So that explains why if we had a positive 2 Coulomb charge here, it would want to go towards regions of lower electric potential. That makes sense. This positive 2 Coulomb charge wants to go in this direction because as it goes, it'll go, go, the system will go to a lower energy state. This is System will have less energy in the form of electrical potential energy. So as this positive Coulomb charge, if we have any positively charged particle go towards regions of lower electric potential, we're going to we're having our system go to a lower energy state with, with less electric energy in the form of electrical potential energy. And we know all systems want to go to lower energy states, more stable, lower energy states. So, so that should make sense. And now let's do the whole thing over again, but let's say we had negative 2 Coulomb charge in this region. If we had a negative 2 Coulomb charge in this region, we just multiply them and we would have a system with this much energy in the form of electrical potential energy. If we have a negative 2 Coulomb charge in this region of electric potential, we would have a system with positive 10 joules of energy in the form of electrical potential energy. So we know negatively charged particles always want to go towards two regions of higher electric potential. Negatively charged particles will always go towards regions of higher electric potential, go to regions that are higher in electric potential, because as that negative to, as that negatively charged particle goes towards regions of higher electric potential, then this system is going to a lower energy state, a system with less energy in the form of electrical potential energy, which is stable and, and energetically favorable.